We have amazing grace. This is a joke. Flavor, you agree to combat. You're fired. Whatever the f I want. From Los Angeles, it's time for the Weekly Reel with Josh and Katie. On a slightly more shallow side of the reality pool, we have the charming ladies from the girls next door. Hef, now checking in at 114 years old, decided to pop into his studio for the first time in 15 years and visit his three girlfriends. When he got there, he stumbled onto a shoot with Kayla, a new Playboy hopeful. Oh, hey, no. Hello there. Hello there. How are you? Hello there. <laughs> hello there. Kayla. You're looking hello. good. I <laughs> come over and say hello, but I don't want to embarrass you. Oh, no, come over. <laughs> It, it wouldn't help. My pleasure. Nice to meet you. You know what they say about first impressions, especially when you're on all fours. And naked. <laughs> Can you say fourth girlfriend? Nah. Pep's a devoted man. Three's more than enough to keep him happy. Hey, you guys, it's Katie, and I'm here on the set of The Biggest Loser. I'm going to take you on a tour of the behind the scenes stuff that they don't show you on television. So come on. Okay, so I'm with Brittany, and we're in what's called the prison yard. Yes. So tell us about this uh, scary named place. You know what? It didn't, it was just the outside gym at one point. And then after this became Bob's favorite place to work out and put people to, through torture. Right. Um, it became the prison yard. So these are the New Year's resolution banners. And okay. mine is to be steamy hot. <laughs> so we're here with Mark and um, he's going to give us a little tour of the gym. Well, I've been working in a so what else happens in here besides just working out? Do you guys do any, does this well, serve another purpose? Yeah, actually behind the doors uh, is the biggest loser scale. So that's where you do the dreaded weigh-in. When we walk in here and those doors open up and we see that scale and we have to walk up one at a time to it, your mood switches from workout to, oh. I hope I worked out enough. Right, I was you gonna know? say, it's it, like the real deal behind those doors. Behind those doors is, the, is, the, uh, is uh, your future at this place. Okay, so can you explain a little bit about why this is on a rope? If I put it on my finger and wear it on my ring finger, right. it slides right off. <laughs> This ring is the single most important uh, physical or material possession that I have in my life because it symbolizes, you know, basically the love I have for my wife and right. my family and I keep it close to my heart. Oh so. my God, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> I'm going to cry. The, the longer I can add on to my life, the longer I can be there to provide and support. Right. Well, you're like clearly well on so, your way. I'm trying. In this segment, Off the Record, we talk with a different competition show judge and see what they have to say when the cameras stop rolling on this week's episode of their show. Okay, we're here with Randy, and you are in the hot seat on the Weekly Reel. Okay, so Randy, on American Idol, when you have to deal with like auditions that are really horrific and some of the talent is not so great, what stops you from going, you know? <laughs> Like that? Uh, I never really quite get like that. That would probably be some other people that I know. I know it's early in the season, but what are you thinking about the prospects of American Idol? I don't I know, know you man. It's gonna say, be tough. It's gonna be tough though, you know, because at this stage, all of them are really, really good. Right. I mean, it's really America votes, and also the judges get to vote too. So uh, a trillion uh, percent yes. I love this girl. I, it's cool. It's very cool. Also, me and Paula Abdul have an amazing record I out know. called "Dance Like There's No Tomorrow." I remember like growing up, studying, like recording her things. <laughs> it was like dun dun, and then the snake like. Whoa! I all know. right. Up, now, tell me, do you really wanna love? You heard it here first. Up next, it's 15 Minutes. Topic number three, American Idol. This show's 15 minutes are way up. It's looking older than John McCain. They haven't changed the set, the format, or the music, or the graphics in seven years. Every decent singer in America has auditioned for the show. What we are left with now is a parade of mediocrity that goes in front of these three bozo judges for our amusement. I am no longer amused. I don't know who told Paula Abdul she was a, a rainmaker for superstars. She can barely dress herself. And 90% of these winners are are not making hit records. Ruben Stutter's pumping gas at Chevron. Show's over. Oh my gosh, yikes, Josh. Okay, well first of all, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I think that American Idol is like a ratings smash. Nobody wants to put any show up against it because obviously no one's gonna be watching it. The format, they gotta keep it the same. I think when they start adding new things, people don't like it. 
Uh, secondly, Paula Abdul, um, people like to see her. Who doesn't want to see Paula Abdul sloshed and drunk and over accessorized? I mean, that's really the reason I tune in. It's time for Real on Red with Katie. The red carpet is a major part of the Hollywood scene, and here at the Weekly Reel, we have the Reel on Red. Right now, live from the red carpet in New York, we have actor, host Mario Lopez. Hey Mario, what's up? How's it going down at the show? It's going great, you know, I love that we shoot it live and uh, uh, there's nothing like live television. Okay, you have a really awesome job. I remember you being such a great dancer back in the day. I know you still got the moves. What do you think about the talent on this show? The talent is just amazing. And the great thing is, is that these kids are dancing purely from the heart and, and it's all passion because a lot of them haven't really had formal training. Awesome, thank you so much. Oh, when does the show air? The show airs on Thursdays on MTV at 10 p.m. Eastern. I guess it'd be 10 p.m. Pacific as well. Thursday nights, just watch MTV all Thursday night and you're straight. All right, thank you so much, Mario. All right, thanks a lot. It's time for the hype. Welcome to the hype, where we discuss all of the upcoming reality shows and decide which ones will be the next Dancing with the Stars and which ones will be dead on arrival. On set, we're joined by Kyle Brandt from the Real World Chicago, and from our field is one of our viewers via their Sprint camera phone. Hank Braxton, let's have our viewer start the discussion. A lot of people have been talking about this NBC reality TV series, The Baby Borrowers, where a teenage couple takes care of some stranger's infant for two weeks. I know there was a lot of similar controversy around Kid Nation before it aired, but my question with this series is, does the mother and father win an award for most negligent parents at the end of the show? Well, I will weigh right in and say I think this show is nuts. Kyle, your thoughts? <laughs> well, I'll tell you something, Josh. Whenever something revolts me, like the concept of this show does, I try to find a silver lining, and I think I found one in this case. This show may be the first completely foolproof method of contraception. What about these parents who are loaning their kids out to be on reality TV, I think it's Katie? awesome. Awesome. This is why nobody will have children with you. You're insane. <laughs> no. True. I listen, I would if I had children, I would let them. And I think we're looking at a lawsuit. We'll wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> One more time, it's Josh and Katie with the edge of reality. We are just a few days away from the start of Survivor 16, fans versus favorites. Yawn. Time to take this tired old dog out back and put it down. Who really cares what pretty, young, surgically enhanced fan they put up against their Survivor favorites? I don't want to see Elizabeth Hasselbeck spouting her right-wing views, and the only time I ever want to see Johnny Fairplay again is if he's getting body slammed by Danny Partridge. If you're going to do a favorite Survivor, you need to expand it to like an all-time reality show favorites. Who doesn't want to see William Hung singing around the campfire, or Flavor Flav trying to pick something out of his grill, or Janice Dickinson freaking out during one of those lame challenges where she has to untie the knot to get to the key that opens the box that holds the puzzle pieces? I mean, seriously, guys, it's time for some different challenges. And hey, Mark Burnett, listen up. When are you going to upgrade to high def? You pride yourself on your beauty shots, and you're not hurting for money last time I checked. What did I buy my 62-inch TV set for? I want those birds and crabs and sharks to jump into my living room and scare me. Step it up. Bottom line, Mark Burnett and CBS, we are reality fans and we want to like your show, but there are a lot more out there fighting to get space on our TiVos. Let's see something new and creative or the upcoming top dog show just might take your slot in my DVR. Thanks for watching the Weekly Reel. I'm Katie. And I'm Josh. We'll see you next week.